It's a 3D printed guitar that lights up when you play it. And it's your lucky day because I'm about to show you how I built it. I designed the guitar in Fusion 360, which I should first mention was my first time using Fusion 360. I mostly stumbled my way through it all using brute force and Google. So on the guitar side of things, we've got a single bridge pickup, a fixed bridge, one push pull pot that does volume and tone, and the neck bolts on. As for the 3D printing, We've got hexagons, lots of hexagons, more hexagons than anyone could ever want or need. The guitar body is split up into four pieces, so each can be easily printed on my 3D printer. The four pieces then handily bolt together to become one again. There's this big old cavity in the back of the guitar which will be filled with many electronics, many LEDs and one battery. To make the bare gut relief in the body, I created a huge sphere of energy like Goku did with that spirit bomb in Dragon Ball Z. Except it didn't take me months, only a few weeks. Once the spirit bomb is detonated, you're left with the final guitar body. I ran my 3D printer for around 60 hours to turn an extremely long ABS plastic noodle into a guitar body. Here's that 60 hours of printing sped up for your viewing pleasure. Here's the parts that I printed, in all their plasticky glory. At this point, I'd already installed some bits into them because I'm impatient. But this is mostly how they looked, fresh out of the printer. First up, string guide thingies that hold the end of the guitar strings and route them from the back side of the guitar to the front. To assist the bolting together of the body parts, the centerpiece has these metal M4 nut inserts that I first lightly screw in to get them to bite and then I use my mini lightsaber to heat up the inserts and push them all the way in. A small piece of adhesive backed foam acts as a pickup pillow to give the pickup somewhere soft to lay its head. The bridge is simply thrown onto the body and held in tight using five self tapping screws. Guitar jack, complete with 3D printed spacer, I hope Ivan would approve, is inserted into the bottom gently. A nut on the other side keeps it locked in place. Here's the dual volume and tone pot. It makes a very satisfying click when pulling and pushing. I can see myself pulling it quite a bit in the near future. Guitar strap pegs are held on with very long self tappers. These will need to be very sturdy as I intend on rocking quite hard.
two upper body pieces mate together like they do on the Discovery Channel and a single bolt combines them forever. Okay, this is the exciting bit. Time to bolt the body together. The parts kind of slide together with a decent application of force and the correct tongue angle. Many more bolts than is needed to hold everything together. Because if it's worth doing, it's worth using too many bolts. Wow, this whole time and I've not even mentioned the neck. Truth is, I've been a dirty cheat and just brought one off the internet. The idea of 3D printing a guitar neck makes me shiver at night and I prefer to sleep, so here we are. To give the headstock some 3D printed flair, however, I have once again reached into the hexagon box and pulled out many hexagons to make a little faceplate for the headstock. hexagon truss rod cover because a circle one would have looked odd. Nick just pushes in from the front with a good heave, bolts up the back, get it tightened down good. Hardware and electronics is a magical art of adding and removing capacitance until you make something that works. In my case, I went through two somethings. One that kind of worked, and another that mostly worked. Starting with the kind of worked, I used a whole bunch of off-the-shelf components. I failed to properly understand the nuances of not sucking all the sound out of the guitar without correctly buffering the input. Blah, 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 blah. Version 2 came around, which I had a friend help me with, and it's much sexier, much more correctly correct, and it works too. Writing the software was next up, and luckily for me, I'm an embedded software engineer by trade, so this part was my forte. I'm using ARM's FFT implementation to process the sampled guitar input, and then using the FFT output to dictate which LEDs to light up and at what brightness for the LED spectrum analyzer main lighting mode. I also threw in a bunch of other LED modes, which are animations that are influenced by the intensity of the shredding. May I present to you the Finnish guitar. To power up the guitar, you just press this button and everything wakes up. We start on the LED mode screen, which has a grid of the different LED modes you can cycle through. We've got a hue colored spectrum analyzer mode first, then red, green, blue, and white modes, which just light up the guitar in their respective colors with the brightness dependent on how hard the guitar is being played. After that, there's a chase animation mode where the lights look like they chase each other, which speeds up based on the intensity of the shredding. The fire mode is quite neat. It creates a fire-like animation which grows larger based on the amount of string abuse. A rainbow mode, just for you double rainbow lovers out there. Like all the others, it changes with the intensity. 
Then just to rattle the last ones off, there's a BPM or beats per minute mode, a juggle mode and a confetti mode, which are all fairly groovy. The last is a demo mode, which doesn't require the guitar to be played, it just cycles through the modes, injecting random intensities to simulate how it would look if the guitar was being played. There's also a tuner built in, which doesn't work too amazingly right now, I just need to tweak it some more. We've got brightness control, in the form of double clicking the button. Most light up guitars only go to 10, but this one goes to 11, which is one more unit of light than the others. Holding down the button puts the guitar back into a low-powered sleep mode. 